Do you want to be a wedding photographer? I'm a member of Facebook groups and I've got my YouTube channel. So I, I get a lot of feedback from photographers who say they, they've done one wedding and they'd love to do more or they haven't done any weddings and they'd love to do one. Or they've done two or three and they'd like to make it a, a full-time job. Well, in this video, I'm going to cover really quickly um, your first, second, third or fourth wedding. What to do, what to take, how to get, or some ideas about how to get your next wedding and so on and so forth. I'll keep it really short, but this is kind of a, a prequel to my much longer video. I've got an 80 something minute video, the link is below, where I go through, I've got three sections about photography and I've got three sections about business. The business of being a full-time wedding photographer. It's free, just click on that link and go take a look. Maybe you like my style of teaching, maybe you don't. But anyway, take a look, I'm sure you'll learn something and I'm sure you'll learn something from this video as well, I hope so. Very quickly about me, I've been photographing weddings since 2012. I've done around about over 250 now. I've won awards in magazines and all sorts of things. But so, um, and the most important thing is it's my full time job. Uh, next year, we're in November 2023 at the moment. Uh, next year, I've a couple of days ago booked my 41st wedding for next year. So basically next year is completely booked and that's that's been the case for quite well certainly since covid covid obviously screwed things up but and before covid it was maybe not quite as many maybe it was 32 35 something like that and it means like you i can pursue my passion i absolutely love doing weddings so let's jump in I'm going to really just cover very quickly photography today. I'll just mention business just for two minutes a bit later on. What do you take on your wedding day? What things shouldn't you forget? What do you need to do? <coughs> Excuse me. What do you need to focus on? What are the important parts? How does the wedding progress? Let me just cover that. As I say, it's in much more detail in the video below. But for today, let's start with what do you take with you? It's the evening before your wedding tomorrow. What are you going to put in your bag? What are you going to plan for tomorrow? Let's talk about gear because taking gear, cameras and lenses is a good idea as a wedding photographer. So, um, by the way, sorry, there's a PDF also. Click on the link, you can get to the PDF with all this stuff in, download it and it's maybe help you with a kind of checklist. So, Cameras, two cameras, two cameras with two card slots. Write raw files to the main card slot, decent quality JPEGs to the second card slot. No question, there is no other way of doing it. I have never had a card fail in 200 and whatever it is, 50 something readings, but it could do. Make sure the JPEGs that you write to the backup card, to the second card, would be usable should you need to use them. So what I mean is don't do JPEGs in black and white because if you ever need to use those as a backup, you're only going to have black, black and white shirts. So just make them normal, standard sort of looking JPEGs, but good quality. Lenses. I'm going to be a bit controversial. I don't use a zoom lens. When I first started, 2012, I started with one camera. I did have a backup, but I didn't actually use it. I just used one camera and a zoom lens, a 24 to 120 f4 lens, and that's what I used. Um, move on a year, 18 months, and I swapped that for um, two lenses, um, a 24 to 70, 2.8, and a 70 to 200, 2.8, and I used two cameras, but again, both zooms. After I think it was about four years, maybe five, 2017 I think, I switched from Nikon to Sony, uh, a Sony A7 III, yes, A7 III. 
And at that point, I also changed to prime lenses. Um, and I used um, a 35 and a 50 as my main lenses, and I had an 85 and a 24. Um, I didn't have a zoom lens, and from that point on, I've really only used prime lenses. 24, 35, 50 and 85. The reason is, prime lenses simply give you better photographs. There is no zoom lens which gets better quality photos than a reasonably priced prime lens. Prime lenses also get you working. You have to move. With a prime lens, you can't just stand there. And once you get moving, you will start to see better photos. If you stand there with a zoom lens and just zoom in and out, I find it very limiting. Maybe you maybe you disagree, and that, that's fine. But prime lenses, for me, are all I take. As I say, um, the full lenses. We then need spare batteries. Um, if you've got a DSLR, like this old chat, my D750, um, that will take two and a half thousand shots, you probably don't need any spare batteries. If, on the other hand, you've got a mirrorless, like this Z8, which only takes about 600 shots, you're going to need some spare batteries. Make sure you've got plenty and <laughs> make sure they're all charged. A speed light. Um, I take, I have a, a Godox V1 um, on camera speed light, but I also have a Godox AD200 beer bulb flash. Take both of those along, a couple of light stands, obviously the triggers to go on the camera to trigger the off camera flashes. And, and that really is about it. You don't, you don't need to take a huge amount more than that. And, and to a large extent, the less you take, the less choice you've got, and the more you're going to focus on using what you've got to the best ability in, 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 in the best way you can. So gear-wise, that's it. And a big flask of coffee, of course. And some spare, comfortable shoes, which after about four o'clock in the afternoon, you might decide you'd rather wear. So, um, I also take a schedule and all the details. Um, so I print this out the evening before, so I know oh, <laughs> the bride and groom's name, um, all the phone numbers that I need, all the emails I need, I'll take a copy of the um, proposal that I've sent the bride and groom where I detail exactly what I'm going to shoot, when I'm going to shoot it, how I'm going to shoot it, within reason. I don't tell them absolutely everything. Obviously, depends what happens on the day. Um, but all the main parts of the day, they will probably have sent me a list of group photos that they want, and sometimes that's we just want a big photo of everyone, and we're done. And other times it's two pages, um, 40 different shots of various different groups. I, I have no input to the group shots at all. I do what I'm told. If that's what they want, that's what I'll take. Plan your route. Um, most of my weddings tend to be 45 minutes to an hour away for some weird reason. I very get, I very rarely get um, to do weddings 10 minutes up the road. Why is that? I don't understand that. Anyway, um, plan your route. Uh, on the day, just before you leave, check with some traffic website. Make sure there's no hold-ups on the way or no accidents that, that have closed the motorway or something like that. Just do the best you can to make sure you, you get, that you're going to get there on time. Nice and relaxed. Check the weather forecast. And if you're fairly new to wedding photography... I take um, a shot list. So sit down, quiet place, piece of paper, pen, and think, take yourself through the day. You might not have ever done a wedding before, but you've probably attended someone else's wedding at some point, or you've got married yourself. Think what happens in the day. What shots do I want of this part of the wedding? P probably you're starting with the bride's prep. What what sort of shots are you going to get? Do some research. Look at other photographers. Look at um, what prep shots you personally like. What shots do you think they would like? Have they asked for anything specific? 
write them down. Then think about how you're going to get this shot. Where are you going to be? Not where you're going to be standing, because you probably don't know what the room looks like. But what lenses could you use? What settings would you use on your camera? Do you think you would need to the best of your ability? And then move on from prep. So after prep, when and where are you going to go to get shots of the grooms and uh, the groom and the groomsman, the best man? Where are you going to get? The, what point in the day are you going to get shots of the rings? How does it all fit together? Put the jigsaw together before you go. Write it all down. Don't just commit it to memory because on your day. It will only take one thing to make you sort of go off track and, and you'll completely lose the plot. Have a piece of paper, make sure you can refer to it. And don't forget, even if they've said you're going to get fed, take, take some food with you. Once or twice, it's happened to me, and when you get to four o'clock and everyone's sitting down to eat and, oh no, we didn't do a meal for you, um, and you're out in the middle of nowhere, you want something to eat, believe me. Right. Uh, moving on from that, so in the, the PDF um, I've listed all these shots out as well, so it is worth downloading that. When I, when I first arrive at a wedding venue, which will typically be, if I'm doing prep, and almost all weddings these days are a full day and I do prep, so if their wedding is, if the ceremony is at say one o'clock, I would work it back to decide what time I need to get there. So if their wedding's at one o'clock, She's going to be ready, finished, ready to go at 12.45. The registrar will want to see her anyway at 12.45 for their 10 minute chat. Which probably means she's getting in her dress probably about quarter past 12. Which means she'll probably actually be ready to get in her dress at 12. So take it forward an hour from that and probably 11 o'clock she's going to be halfway through prep. So make it a little bit earlier, about 10.30. And, and that's the sort of time that I would arrive. I don't want to arrive at prep when she's not even out the shower, or the hair and makeup artists haven't even arrived. But just check when you're having your discussion with the bride and groom, what time to start. That's the sort of time I would suggest to start, but I always say, and tell the hair and makeup artist that that's the time I'll be arriving. Is that going to be okay? So arrive at that time, and I just walk in. I, I arrive. I'll find the bride and uh, the bridal suite where probably they're getting ready, and I should just walk in. So I know the bride, and you you might laugh, but the night before I also check out probably any engagement photos, which I will probably have done. Um, or check their Facebook page if I haven't done that, and just try and find out what does a bride look like? Which which one? And when you've got 40 weddings, it is easy to get mixed up and forget what they look like. And there's nothing worse than walking to, into um, a room where there's the bride and four bridesmaids all having the hair and makeup done, and you don't actually know which one is the bride. It's not good. <laughs> Make sure you know who is the bride. And, and just say hi, and say hi to everyone. Um, say hi to the makeup artists and just look around the place take your time take a few minutes just take it all in what's happening how's it all going uh, everything going to plan and you know how do you feel today just just start a bit of a conversation get things relaxed get people used to you being there i'll then go and get my gear as little as possible which is usually just two cameras each with a lens on a 24, it depends on the size of them, 24 and a 35 or a 35 and a 50. Um, take those up, you can get all the shots you need to with prep, um, with that with that gear. Don't take, you know, six camera bags and flash stands, and, it's just overkill, don't do it. Keep it simple. And I start with the details, with, with the details and the dress. So. I'll find somewhere to hang the dress to get some nice shots of that. I'll get the details, their shoes, perfume, jewellery, all this kind of stuff, and I'll arrange it all somewhere where I can get some nice shots. Um, so I'm not photographing people. So people in the room, everyone gets used to me being around, gets used to me getting in their way and, and, and just being a bit of a pain. 
as life, isn't it? As a wedding photographer. Before I even start to photograph the bride or the bridesmaids, people, okay? Um, at some point, at some point, the groom and the groomsman, the best man, will arrive at the venue. If they're not already there, they may be getting ready somewhere else, in which case I'll nip off at some point and get some shots of them getting ready too. If they're getting ready somewhere else and travelling to the venue, then I'll know what time they've said they're going to get there. And I'll find a point, probably when maybe the bridesmaids are getting their dresses on, or oh, the bride's getting her dress on. Um, sometimes she's quite happy that I stay there and we get shots of her getting her dress on and, and that kind of thing. Other times they're not. If not, then that's an ideal opportunity to nip out and get some shots of the guys. The guys will normally have the rings. The best man should have those. Get some shots of the rings, the venue, the flowers, all the other stuff like that. Come back, Brian's got her dress on, but not completely done up because you want some shots of the sort of last parts of doing the dress up, putting the veil on, putting the shoes on, so on and so forth. Get all that done. And I could continue. In my other video, the longer one, I do go right the way through the day. But I'm not going to here. That's the sort of detail that I go through in that other video. I want to keep this one short. So, towards the end of prep, I'm thinking, and I've now been to see the groom and the groomsman, where the ceremony room is. I know what the layout is. I know where the bride will be going, at, um, at what time. So I can plan the next part. I can plan photographing her journey from prep to the ceremony. I've seen the ceremony room. I know what I'm dealing with. I know what lenses I need. Am I going to be able to move around the ceremony room? Am I going to be stuck in one place? What do I need with me? Not over the other side of the room. What do I need with me to get the shots I want of the bride entrance, walking up the aisle, the couple shots, and so on and so forth. Whenever you're doing one part of the wedding, find some time in your head to think of the next bit. Um, for instance, when, when they finish the ceremony and they go and sign the register, which you're not allowed to photograph here in the UK, um, that's an opportunity to grab all my gear and go to the other end of the aisle, the ceremony room, so that when they've finished signing, First of all, I can run down and get some shots of them at the table pretending to sign the pretend register, but also then just walk backwards so I can get shots of them walking back up the aisle and then easily grab my gear to get into the next room or out in the garden, wherever it is, rather than it being stuck behind all the guests who are trying to get out of the ceremony room. So it's that sort of planning ahead that, that makes your life easy and enables you to get <laughs> photographs rather than running around trying to get your bags and your gear and the stuff that you've forgotten and oh I've left that lens up in the room where she did her prep. It does take some planning which all gets much easier once you've done a few readings of course. So that's the day uh, let's go right to the end of the day. Um, cake cutting, first dance this is the only place I would use flash. Um, with one exception. Group shots, um, out in the garden, very bright sunny day, you found a nice spot, you've got some nice background, there's space for all the guests, depending on how many they are. And by the way, when you're doing group shots, don't do the football lineup. Find some elevation, find a, a wall for some people to stand on, um, picnic benches, stairs, anything to try and get some elevation to give you more interesting group shots. Can't always do it, but if it's at all possible, do that. It just makes for so much better group shots. Sorry, digress. Bright sun, so when you're shooting this group, they're gonna tend to be underexposed. So I would, at that point, set up both flashes behind me, pointing towards the group, um, and just, I'm not trying to illuminate them, I'm just trying to just lift the shadows that they've probably got under their eyes and that kind of thing um, with the sun behind them. Um, also allows you not to completely blow out the sky behind them. So just use flash in that occasion. 
but then nothing else uh, until Kate Cassin first dance and, and that's explained in the PDF when you get home when you get home even if it's 11 o'clock at night I always take the cards out of the camera upload to my computer upload to a you know, a plug-in disk drive, of which I've got about six plugged in at the moment, I think. Download all the photos to one of those, and then have a dedicated different plug-in drive, copy from the first drive to the second drive. So you've now got those photos on the camera cards, on a hard drive, plug-in hard drive, and on a completely separate plug-in hard drive. You, you must protect those photos. They are worth they're worth whatever you've been paid for the wedding so they're very valuable don't do anything that could possibly lose them I have once had a disk drive fail on me um, and I was so pleased that I didn't have to go through the rigmarole of trying to recover them and paying for software to try and get the, that drive back I just went to my backup drive and got the photos from there once you've done that, import them into Lightroom and that can take quite a while if you're building smart previews and this kind of thing. So I just then do that and go off to bed. So in the morning, I've got all my photos there in Lightroom ready to start editing. More on that in the big course below. And a quick word about business, because one of the questions that comes up so often is how, where and what do I need to do to get my next wedding, my first wedding, my seventh or eighth wedding? What do I do? And the truth is, you do you do a whole ton of things. Um, I get weddings from probably ten different places, ranging from Facebook, YouTube, uh, wedding sites, um, wedding fairs, referrals, and sometimes quite a lot these days, not so much in the early days, but more and more these days, just straight off the website. How they got to my website, I have no idea. Um, I do quite often ask, how did you find my website? Where did you find me? And because they've been dealing with so many suppliers and three or four different photographers and, and so on and so forth, they probably don't remember anyway. So um, the main ones, if you're fairly new in photography, it would be Wedding fairs, um, be a little bit wary. They can be good or bad. I did one a couple of weeks ago, which was bad. Uh, I think we had eight couples through the door in four hours, of which I spoke to five, of which I expect to get absolutely nothing, and, and so forth. So this doesn't always work well. I did do one the year before at a different venue where there was... Oh, well, there was a queue of people to talk to me, uh, and I'll probably book five weddings in that one day. It's something you should do, but don't expect to get a result every single time. Um, online, wed uh, bridal, <laughs> wedding websites. If you were a bride and you were looking for somewhere to go, a website to go, who can give you some ideas about suppliers, give you tips about planning your wedding, maybe give you a wedding diary, um, maybe would have suppliers who, if you book through this website, you'll get 10% off and that kind of thing. Where would a bride go? Go to those websites and many of them will allow you to put, do a free listing um, and if they allow you to do a free listing, they'll probably allow you to do a paid listing, which obviously will get you higher up the rankings when a bride goes to that site to find a photographer. Um, I pay for, I think, f three or four, I can't remember. Um, but I do still have six or seven free listings on other sites. And every now and then you just get an inquiry from one of these free sites and it turns into a wedding. Facebook, um, yep, always p post on Facebook. There's various groups um, and, and um, l look for groups in your area. Uh, again, where would a bride go? If she went onto Facebook, where would she be looking for a, a photographer? Go there, make sure you've got something there. And of course a website. And again, I cover that in, in, in that longer um, video below. 
we can spend an hour, an hour at least, talking about just the general principles of a website that's going to get you business. It's not something you do in an afternoon and that's it. You spend the rest of your life as a wedding photographer, you're spending time on your website, tweaking it, adding photos, changing things, blah, 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 and so on. But obviously you need a website, you need nice, nice photos. And again, one of the questions that comes up is, I haven't done a wedding. How do I get wedding photos on my website for people to see? Try and be a second shooter. It depends on where you live. When I first started, I tried to be a second shooter for some of the wedding photographers in my area. Um, I think I probably emailed seven or eight. Um, I know that only two came back to me and neither of those gave me a chance to be a second shooter. You might have more luck, hopefully so. If not, uh, what have you photographed? Have you photographed families? If so, have you got some shots just of mum and dad? Probably don't post photos of the kids and the dog on a wedding website. And by the way, if you want to be a wedding photographer, then your website is a wedding photographer. You're not a family photographer, commercial photographer, headshot, etc. You're a wedding photographer. Keep your website about weddings. By all means have other websites, but each one should be about that particular subject. Search engine optimization, um, depending again where you live and how much competition there is in the area, you would want to spend some time doing SEO, um, maybe even pay someone to help you with that. Um, it's horribly, horribly complicated and in the early days, uh, probably a better route to go is to do Google Ads to get your website in front of anyone who types into Google wedding photographer in wherever you live. Your ad will pop up. They will possibly go to your website, see this beautiful website with wonderful photos and click on contact me or whatever. Absolutely essential, of course. I'm going to call that it for now. I hope you found something a little bit of what I said here and there, useful. As I say, there is more down below. It's completely free. I am doing this as a prequel to a complete wedding photography course, which is going to cover photography and business. What I do as a working full-time wedding photographer, I don't claim to be a world-class, award-winning photographer who's going to charge you £4,000 $4, for a photography only course and there, are, there is some there is a couple out there at the moment advertising their course which will teach you to be a world class photographer but it won't teach you a thing about getting any business there are other courses out there which will teach you to make $10,000 next month and if you actually believe that then well, don't. It won't work. Uh, but anyway, there's, pl there's several people doing courses, you know, selling courses, again, thousands of dollars, about make $10,000 next month. It won't work, guys. I promise you. Wedding photography is definitely not get rich quick. But it will fulfil your passion. It will give you something that you're desperate to do, you will love doing, and... Providing you do it properly will make you a, a decent full-time income. But that course isn't ready yet, hence the reason for these couple of free videos. Thank you very much for watching. And I'm happy to answer any questions, queries or anything else. Please drop a comment in and um, as soon as possible I'll get back and answer it. Thank you so much for watching and very best of luck with your wedding photography.